Hello and welcome to Enlightened Corporation. My name is Austin and I will host today's video. This video will go into depth about the involvement with the government and the assassinations of symbolic characters who lived during very important and pivotal times. We fall. The symbolic people that the real men in power and the government agencies they control covered up and murdered are JFK, MLK, and Malcolm X to ensure they maintain power and maintain division between the people. Let us begin. Welcome to Enlightened Corporation. Let's first talk about John F. Kennedy. People loved JFK. Even to this day, people still love JFK. He was a good looking guy with a good looking family. He gave people confidence and he had a great public figure. People agreed with what he said and he was a great role model. He rode this support from the public to go into American politics where he became the 35th president of the United States. Kennedy became president during a very pivotal period in American history. America was in a time of transition with civil rights and a time of uncertainty with the Cold War in the works. When Kennedy first came into office, he noticed all of the corrupt military leaders working around him, plotting plans, killing and overthrowing people and governments across the world in secret. He ended up firing a bunch of these leaders, claiming it was an abuse of American power. Kennedy was about world peace and uniting pe the people of the world. Not war, not death, but unity. This caused tensions between Kennedy and these leaders behind the scenes because war equals money and money is what the rich men want. They were not expecting Kennedy to just come in and fire all of these leaders like Alan Dulles, Charles Cable, and others. It was very surprising, but what wasn't surprising was that Kennedy created a lot of bad blood with these military leaders, with the government, and with the men in power. Another thing Kennedy did to piss off the rich men was executive order 11,110. Before we get into this, if you look up on Google, did JFK try to get rid of the Federal Reserve? Just so we know, the Federal Reserve is the rich man's source of power over the government. Anyways, under the Wikipedia link, it states that Kennedy was assassinated because he tried to usurp the Federal Reserve's power. Pretty crazy if I had to say. But what exactly was Kennedy's plan in this order? Well, it was to issue silver certificates instead of Federal Reserve notes. This would completely screw over the power that the bankers, power brokers, and billionaires would have over the government. So they had to work with the CIA and FBI to get rid of him and to make sure that nobody knew that they planned this. They needed a patsy to cover this up. So who was that patsy? Lee Harvey Oswald was that guy. He was a former Marine and was the first suspect when Kennedy was assassinated. He was a self-declared communist who renounced his American citizenship and became a Soviet Union citizen. But when that didn't work out, he then decided to come back to America where he later shot and killed Kennedy on November 22nd, 1963, supposedly. When he was captured, he was recording saying, that he was a patsy. The president? I work in that building. Were you in the building at the time? Naturally, if I work in that building, yes, sir. Back up, man. Did you Come shoot on, the man. president? No, they're man, taking me in know. because of the fact that I live in the Soviet Union. I'm just a patsy. You the president? A patsy is the person who gets taken advantage of and gets blamed for the crime. But you may be thinking, he's just saying that just to get out of the crime. But I beg to differ. The man who was in charge of the FBI at the time was a man named J. Edgar Hoover. Before any investigation was done, he went to the public and announced that without a doubt, in his mind, it was Mr. Oswald, since he was a communist and all this blabber. Oswald was seen saying that the police will not allow him to have representation, and pretty much Oswald was on mute. He wasn't allowed to say anything. I like some legal representation. These police officers have not allowed me to, to have any. I, uh, I don't know what this is all about. But thank God, thank God we have a court system where all the facts can be released and the truth comes out so we can know if Oswald was the man 
that really killed Kennedy, right? Well, it didn't happen. Two days after the assassination, Oswald was shot and killed by a man named Jack Ruby. He was the owner of a nightclub or something like that. But while he he got shot while he was being transferred to county jail. Something fishy is going on. Without Oswald, there's no trial, no truth of what really happened. It's how the FBI and CIA are covering this up. Lyndon B. Johnson, the new president in power, created the Warren Commission to investigate the event. Let me get one thing straight. LBJ didn't want investigations. If you listen to the phone calls between Lyndon B. Johnson and J. Edgar Hoover, it proves my point that he didn't want any investigations done. A link is in the description for the audio of the phone calls. But besides that, one of the men that LBJ assigned to the commission was a man named Alan Dulles. Sound familiar? Well, that name should sound very familiar. It was one of the leaders that John F. Kennedy fired when he first got into office. This is a clear cover-up. Like, I mean, let's take a look at the supposed bullets that killed JFK and the governor of Texas. The Warren Commission said that three bullets were fired, one missed, and the others entered both bodies and created seven or more wounds, to my knowledge. These bullets look way too pretty. They are shiny and still in bullet shape. Now, if you're a person who ever shot a gun and knows how bullets work, this should not be. I don't care if there's some special bullet. Keep in mind, this was the 60s. Even if there is some special round of ammunition, it still should not look like this. Mostly the way that the Warren Commission described in their report how they believed the bullets traveled. And there's no way two bullets caused that amount of damage. Now, in the reports of the Warren Commission, they mentioned how Oswald acted alone. Alone, 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 alone. A whole bunch of times that was mentioned. The word alone. So what if in reality there's more than one shooter? Even according to the surgeon and doctors who assessed the bodies, were seen reporting that there had to be a shooter from the front and the back. But like I said, they didn't want an investigation. They didn't want to look at the reports that the surgeons and the doctors reported. All they cared about was to cover up the events that happened. They wanted JFK to be 86th. They wanted him gone. They want war, they want people to be divided, and they want to maintain control. JFK was taking all of that away. So no matter what, they're going to put some BS into the media saying that this happened without even investigating it. They know the truth. They know what they did, but they don't want us to know. Now it's time to talk about Martin Luther King Jr. He was a civil rights leader and brought together all races, fought for the rights of blacks in American society. He was a great man and very intelligent, but sadly, he got assassinated on April 4th, 1968 by James Earl Ray. But was this the man that really killed MLK? Was James Earl Ray just another patsy? Well, let's get this started. First of all, MLK's family was seen many times saying that they do not believe the whole story of his death. And in 1999, MLK's family sued the government for a wrongful death and a conspiracy MLK throughout his career received many death threats and many letters from the FBI. And in 1958, MLK was even stabbed in the chest and almost died. And following the assassination of John F. Kennedy, he told his wife that this would happen to him since this is a sick and corrupted world we all live in. During March 28, 1968, MLK was leading marches in Memphis, Tennessee and stayed in Memphis till his death. And the day before he died, he gave his famous I've been to the mountaintop speech. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read 
that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. And so just as I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. The day after, while he was staying at the Lorraine Hotel, he was talking outside the balcony until he was shot. The bullet hit his right cheek and broke his jaw and other bones, as well as severing his arteries and veins in his neck. He was taken to the hospital, but sadly, he was pronounced dead. James Earl Ray was an escaped convict and fled for two months until he was caught trying to flee the country. That's crazy, but... The FBI concluded that James killed MLK because he was a poor man and there was a bounty put out from his southerners who were KKK members to kill MLK. But was this all true? I beg to differ. James was a patsy. They accused that they found his fingerprints on the gun and they accused him of all these speculations without even proving to the public that there was solid evidence of these speculations having a possibility of being true. Three days after he pleaded guilty to first degree murder, James fired his attorney. His reasoning is because he said that his attorney told him that he must immediately confess to the murder or else he will receive the death penalty or someone will kill him quicker. Sounds like a Jack Ruby. From the trial that was held about James being the killer of MLK, not much got uncovered until MLK's family came and spoke saying that James was an innocent man in regards to killing MLK because James had other crimes like robbing a grocery store and he was guilty for that. But in 1997, Dexter King, the son of MLK, went to the penitentiary where James was and asked him, did you kill my father? His response was, no, I did not. Dexter then replied, I know and my family knows. After this, the King family fought hard for James to get a retrial, but when this didn't go through, the King family in 1999 sued the federal government for committing a conspiracy of murder. And guess who won? The King family. In this case, in 1999, the King family and its attorney presented 75 plus witnesses and 4,000 pages of transcripts. But in those transcripts, according to the attorney who was on the King's side, said that those transcripts and those who were a part of the conspiracy were the FBI, CIA, US Army, Memphis PD, and the Mafia. The jury unanimously ruled on the King's favor of the trial. The King family also received $100. They didn't care about money, suing them for money. They cared about the truth being released. That's all they cared about. But why wasn't James Earl Ray a part of this trial? You'd think he'd be a part of it. Well, a year before this trial in 1998, James died from injuries he received in a prison fight. Sounds like the government ensuring that the truth doesn't come out. They must kill the patsy before the patsy turns against them. Finally, let's talk about Malcolm X. He was just like MLK, but Malcolm was a little more radical than MLK. Malcolm was strictly for civil rights for blacks, but still he united people together just like MLK and JFK. The men in power do not want unity. All three of these men were killed in the 60s, and during the 60s, it kind of seemed like the FBI and CIA got away with anything they did. But besides that, Malcolm X died on February 21st, 1965 by Thomas Hagen. Now, there are a few people that were wrongfully accused of this murder, but it ended up going towards Thomas Hagen. 
But just like MLK, Malcolm's family sued the federal government and the NYPD, accusing them of being involved with the killing. In 2021, the Malcolm family released a letter from a deceased police officer admitting that he was involved with the killing of Malcolm and how the NYPD was also involved. So all three of these deaths were setups and cover-ups. All three of these guys were set up. All three of these murders were set up. Be aware and be awakened of what is going on around you. The world is not as it seems. There's a lot of lies. The world is corrupt. The United States government is corrupt and it is covered up by a reality show which is known as the presidential election. We all love to choose sides. It's part of the psychology the government uses to divide us. You know, you have one person, oh, Biden, 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 and the other guy, Trump, Trump, Trump. Now they hate each other. It's all psychology. It's a reality show, though. It's a reality show. <laughs> but do not get stuck up in the reality show and understand the real truths behind the government because the president does not have the power. It is the men behind the scenes, the men behind the curtain, the men with the money, the men with the power. They are the ones that run this country. The one who controls the money supply, controls the country. Not some stupid old 80 year old Joe Biden or 78 year old Trump. It's all a reality show, wake up. It's time to wake up and it's time to stand up. You know, people say our voices matter. You're using your voices wrong. You're using your voices to defend, you know, some president, you know, saying that he's better than the other guy who's running in the office. Use your voices about stuff that really matters. You know, we can go on topics like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't, I don't even want to go up go into it but there's so many topics that are in our society now that we're so consumed by you know we fight for rights that don't even matter that don't even matter 